We are in Copenhagen, the pride of Denmark, and one of the oldest capital cities in Europe. For over one million inhabitants, representing a fourth of the country's population, have learned to live, work, and play in harmony with each other. It is now twilight in the town hall square, and most of the people who pass through it at this hour are workers, homeward bound. Copenhagen is a city of towers, outstanding among which is the one that graces the town hall itself, reaching an altitude of 350 feet and forming an interesting contrast with the Bronze Age trumpeters who appear to be blowing their ancient lures as a symbol of welcome. Perhaps the most unique barometer in the world is the one in Copenhagen's Town Hall Square. If the weather threatens to be stormy, the warning figure with the raincoat and umbrella comes into view. But if the weather promises to be clear, the young lady with the bicycle comes forth. And speaking of bicycles, there is at least one for every third person in Copenhagen. At the beginning of each workday, the cyclists come from all parts of the city and its suburbs and silently converge in the main thoroughfares, all en route to their respective occupations. Mail carriers, secretaries, merchants, lawyers, doctors, clerks, chimney sweeps, clergymen, the whole gamut of human life is represented in this daily parade of the cyclists. In the older sections of Copenhagen, we find life to be very much the same as it must have been centuries ago when Dutch pioneers, by royal permission, established a fish market here. The little monument in the background is a humble tribute to the fisherwomen who still wear the same style of costumes that were worn by their ancestors. Denmark, being a daughter of the sea, is naturally a fish-eating country. And nowhere in the world can one find choicer varieties of seafood than in Copenhagen. This old market specializes in the sale of eels, a species of fish that tastes better than it looks. Overlooking the fish market is the famous statue of Bishop Absalom, who fought at the city of Copenhagen about 800 years ago. He named it Kerpmanhaven, and the Danes now call it Kerpenhaven. The Germans pronounce it Copenhagen, and in English it's Copenhagen. But call it what you will, it all means merchant's haven. Although Bishop Absalom founded the city, it was King Christian IV who built most of its many unique landmarks, outstanding among which is the Bourse or Stock Exchange, with its fantastic tower made of the entwined tails of four copper dragons. Since the year of 1640, this institution has been in active existence, and it is still one of Europe's most important business establishments. Another architectural oddity is the steeple of the Church of Our Savior, around which has been constructed a spiral staircase. And here is the famous Round Tower, built by Christian IV to serve as an astronomical observatory. Designed like a giant organ is the Grundtvig Church, dedicated to the memory of Bishop Grundtvig, a renowned Danish poet, statesman, and clergyman. The English Church of St. Alban has been reflecting itself in this lake for over a half a century, and it bears the unique distinction of being the property of the British government. Nearby is the world-famous Gaffian Fountain, designed by Anders Bungard. According to legend, the goddess Gaffian was granted the right to plow all the land she could out of Sweden in one day 
whereupon she changed her four sons into powerful oxen, and from sunrise to sunset, plowed out the land for Denmark that is now known as Zealand. Another monument that has won worldwide acclaim is that of King Frederick V, which stands in front of the palace that has been the official residence of the Danish king since 1794. During the recent Nazi occupation of Copenhagen, the Royal Guards gallantly defended this palace against overwhelming odds, and many of them were killed. But the Nazis are all gone now, and the flag of Denmark still waves proudly over Europe's oldest kingdom. In the heart of Copenhagen, we visit the celebrated Tivoli Gardens, where on 20 acres of priceless land has been established a most unique amusement center. From the 1st of May until late September, the attractions of Tivoli are in full swing, and the diversions are so varied that there is something to amuse or interest patrons of all ages. Since 1843, Tivoli has been a national asset and a place of happy times for all Danes, as well as for countless visitors from the outside world. It has been called the capital of Copenhagen, and in fact, it has become a very definite part of Danish life. Although there are many mechanical innovations at Tivoli, the old carousel still competes with the best of them. In the Tivoli Gardens, one may see practically every style of architecture known to man. Outstanding among the many architectural oddities is the Chinese theater with its colorful peacock curtain. Here may be seen exotic ballets and pantomimes free of charge. When night descends upon this realm of pleasure, there is an upsurge of merriment and fun which is a revelation to visitors with preconceived ideas about Nordic emotions being restrained. Here, there is neither restraint nor complaint, for the Danes have learned to live, work, and play in harmony with each other. And it is with this thought that we say, farewell to Copenhagen, the city of towers.